play uh, human rights in a systemic manner, we, we, we come across with the situation that most governments that violate human rights systemically call themselves democracies. Cuba calls itself a democracy. All the satellite former Soviet Union countries uh, used to call themselves popular democracies. The DPRK still today is the democratic Korea. The North Korea is the democratic Korea. Uh, the president of Ecuador, uh, Rafael Correa, is on the record just a couple of years ago saying that Fidel Castro holds a democracy because he calls for elections every four years. Uh, because of that, uh, we have to be very precise in the use of the term. And so far, the best definition that, that, we, that we've seen coming from there are two definitions, one coming from political science and one from international law. The one coming from political science comes from a book by professors Steve Levitsky from Harvard University and Professor Luke and Wei from Toronto University in a book called Competitive Authoritarianism. That book defines two types of regimes around the world, democracies and non-democracies. Among non-democracies, there are two types of authoritarian regimes. Uh, one is the fully authoritarian regimes, and those are the classical, your classical dictatorship, the Pinochet dictatorship, the Cuban dictatorship, uh, dictatorships in which there is no opportunity for part participation in the contest for power from any forces in the opposition, full, fully authoritarian regimes. And then there are these new brand of authoritarian regimes, which are also non-democracies, which are competitive authoritarian regimes. These regimes allow for some levels of participation of opposition parties, at least formally. For example, in Venezuela, under La, la Mesa de la Unidad, the unity group of political parties, uh, they are allowed to, to exist legally. They are allowed to have forces that represent them in parliament, but they compete for power under a, a non-level playing field, under a field that is, that is, that is feel, filled with harassment by the government to opposition parties, under a climate of no freedom of expression uh, and, and of, of media uh, freedom, no press freedom at all, a, or very small portions of press freedom. These are regimes where elections are not anymore free and fair. They occur, but they are not free and fair. Great portions of the opposition are harassed judicially, some of them incarcerated. You see that in Venezuela again. You see it also in Singapore. Russia used to be a competitive authoritarian regime along with Kazakhstan or Belarus after the, the fall of the Soviet Union, but they have turned into every day uh, to resemble more, more a fully authoritarian regime. So that would be the definition for political science. Non-democracy is comprised of competitive authoritarian and fully authoritarian regimes and democracies, which are the rest of democracies. The governments are authentically democratic. Most of Western Europe, most of Latin America, uh, definitely North America. Uh, unfortunately, the Middle East, the only full democracy that we can speak about is, is, is Israel. Uh, the rest are either fully authoritarian regimes under the form of the theocratic dictatorships or more competitive authoritarian regimes maybe in, in some developments that we get to see in countries that at least respect a great deal of, of, of religious liberty and other civil liberties like, like Morocco. But uh, that is more or less the political science, I would say, a, a map. And legally, very shortly, the only good definition of democracy was created in 2001 in the region of, of, of the Americas, Canada, the US, and all of Latin America signed a charter called the Inter-American Democratic Charter. Articles three and four of that charter establish what are the basic institutions of democracy. And those are, of course, freedom of expression, wide freedom of expression for opposition parties, a freedom of the press, a complete freedom for the press to operate as a, as a business or as a, also the government to have its state channels, but for all ideas to compete in the marketplace of ideas without any hindrance, any, any, any obstacles from the government. Uh, it also defines as an essential element of democracy, 
independence of the judiciary as the main uh, feature of the separation of powers, and uh, finally, the, 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 the government has to act at all times with a, a strong regard to the rule of law and to, uh, and to uh, again, any critical opinions in, in, in those societies. Under that charter, Venezuela should not be a member of the OAS right now. It should have been suspended from the OAS. Yet, because of mostly ideological reasons and, 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 and a lack, a, a very sad lack of leadership in Latin America, uh, because of ideological reasons and a lack of leadership, Venezuela has become instead a beacon, a, a spearhead for democratic erosion in Latin America, bringing countries like Bolivia, Ecuador, or Nicaragua under that same a, a, a trend, and other perfectly democratic countries with, with, with left-wing uh, philosophies like uh, Chile's, uh, Bachelet's Chile, or Lula and Dilma's Brazil, or, 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 or Tabaré Vázquez and, and, and Mujica's Uruguay, they have instead, in spite of governing democratically internally, have not had the moral authority or have not had the, 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 the leadership of denouncing these other authoritarian governments uh, from, from the left in Latin America and especially, of course, the, 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 the dictatorship in Cuba. Great. Uh, th thank you so much. It's uh, uh, a lot to think about in uh, understanding the, uh, the map of the different republics, regimes, uh, and other entities around the world. Um, our next uh, speaker uh, is Suba.